my name's Kathy McGrath, um, work for Scott Labs, and um, for those of you who don't know Scott Labs, we're a, a company that um, our family owned, and we're now on our third generation um, of family running the company, and we are a, um, a, a company that distributes uh, um, machinery, corks, and um, fermentation um, additives. We've been at it for about the last 80 years. Today I am going to uh, talk a bit about um, some tools that you can use for maintaining your quality um, for bulk wine, especially during transport. And um, we probably start off with uh, um, tannins. For those of you who have bulk wine and maybe need it to be slightly tweaked um, before bottling or before shipping, Tannins are a, a, a wonderful um, tool to impact both your aromatics and your mouthfeel. Um, and um, finishing tannins especially, um, are, if you need a slug of oak at the end, if you want to just tweak something, um, finishing tannins are the way to go. However, um, adding finishing tannins usually need about six to eight weeks um, to integrate before you can bottle or before you can ship. Um, with the, this range of finishing tannins, um, we have three of them. Um, the refined extraction and the drying process um, allows us access to and able to preserve the tannins. Um, as a result, the tannins are more soluble, um, they're more stable, and um, have an immediate impact. So as a result, you can add the tannins 48 hours um, before bottling and they won't uh, clog up your filter. One of the things about tannins is that, as you all know, wine matrixes are very different. And so we highly recommend, whenever you do any addition um, before bottling, to do bench trials. Another tool that, is, um, that can be used to, uh, most of you know about gum arabics. Um, gum arabics are wonderful tools to keep uh, colloidal stability. Um, and also to help the perception of sweet um, and softness on the palate. Um, there are a lot of gum arabics out there, and um, what, makes ours, what makes this one a little cooler, the flash gum MF, is that it's been uh, micro-filtered. So as a result, you can add it immediately before bottling and without clogging up any of your filters. Um, it's also manufactured here in the States, so uh, the lead time is a lot uh, quicker than getting um, gum arabics from overseas. And then um, this is a, a, a product that um, was developed with Lollamond and um, INRA, which is the institute in Montpellier. It's an inactivated yeast. And as you know, um, once a wine is finished uh, fermenting, um, it is very susceptible to oxygen. And the oxidation mechanisms um, responsible for loss of uh, fruity wine uh, characters and also can give you more heavier notes and sometimes can also slightly change the color. Um, so you, having, having a tool um, besides using SO2 to uh, protect your wine against oxidation um, is, uh, is as soon as uh, fermentation is finished um, is, is something that'll uh, protect your wine all the way through. Um, in tooth, uh, so uh, in 2000, um, scientific evidence by Samon et al. was uh, shown that actually yeast, le yeast lees can consume um, oxygen. And they found that um, the two to three weeks after alcoholic fermentation, that um, wines left on the, on the, ye on the yeast lees can consume between one and two milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen per day. So as a result, Lalamond and INRA um, partnered to find a biotechnological tool to help wines face these oxidation problems during um, aging, during storing, um, during transportation, and uh, even in uh, doing, uh, even in in the winery doing uh, winery uh, rackings and, and trans uh, transfers and things. So uh, in 2008, um, they uh, used different yeast strains and different fractions um, to find uh, one that had the highest oxygen um, capacity, consumed capacity. And um, in, uh, after six years of experimentation and validation, um, they produced longevity 
which has um, a high dissolved oxygen consumption capacity and uh, reductive compound release. In other words, it can release some glutathione, which is also going to help protection. So using uh, Pure Lee's Longevity Plus in um, transport uh, has uh, what your, um, uh, your benefits of adding Pure Lee's Longevity during transportation. Um, it consumes dissolved oxygen that could be present in the wines and that also, if, uh, depending on how your wines are transported, they could actually also um, pick up oxygen. So um, this will help uh, consume some of the oxygen during the, 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 the journey. Um, and also, you're getting an improvement of the mouthfeel, the freshness, and the protection. Um, Lullamind have done uh, two real-time trials in real conditions with adding Pure Lee's Longevity Plus. Um, the first one was um, to a Sauvignon Blanc that was... Uh, added uh, to, uh, in, to wines that were going from Argentina to Sweden. There were two flexi, two flexi tanks. They were exactly the same wine. The control had SO2, and the um, second tank had um, SO2 plus 40 grams per hectoliter of the Pure Lee's Longevity Plus. Um, results at arrival um, in Sweden were that there was a slightly higher free SO2 in the treated tank, which meant that it was protected. Um, also, in the control, um, there was 1.3 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen as opposed to 0.3 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen in the, um, in the treated tank. So you had a difference of almost one milligram per liter of dissolved oxygen, which um, can be pretty huge. Um, and also, there was a slightly higher level of the 4 mmp um, thiols in the Sauvignon Blanc in the treated. Um, in the trial um, from uh, Sauvignon Blanc also sent from South Africa to Russia, which um, is a fair ways away, um, there were four flex in this trial there were four flexi tanks, actually eight, because they did it in duplicate um, with a control, um, and then they had Pure Lee's Longevity Plus plus 20 grams per hectoliter, they had um, 40 grams per hectoliter, and then they had 40 grams per hectoliter with half of the SO2 that they would normally um, add, which is 30 milligrams per liter. Here you can see some, um, some graphs of, um, uh, firstly, the dissolved oxygen at reception that um, the, 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 the was divided, you got three milligrams per liter in the control, and you got almost um, uh, less than one in the 40 milligrams per hectoliter of um, um, dissolve, um, pure Lee's longevity um, with the SO2. But even um, halving your SO2 um, and adding this, you are still getting less dissolved oxygen um, in your tanks. Another graph that was run was to show you um, that there was an increase in the glutathione, which is a very good um, marker for oxidation, that if you had less glutathione, it means that there was definitely oxidation. Um, glutathione is a, a very good um, uh, aromatic um, uh, enhancer or uh, stabilizer. and. Um, as a result, you're maintaining a lot of your um, aromatics um, in, in this way. And um, as you can see too, even though there were very low levels of thiol, because it was a Sauvignon Blanc that was for sparkling wine, so there wasn't a lot of the 4 MMP, um, there was still a higher 3 MH um, thiol in, in, in the wines. And then of course, uh, they also ran the color to give you an idea of um, how the color is protected. You've got uh, um, more of the yellow and green as opposed to some of the red, um, and it seemed to be lighter as well. So uh, you um, have a, a way of being able to protect your wines and how you send it, wh wh when you send it from the beginning, hopefully it arrives there in the same uh, condition, and um, this is a way to help, uh, 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 help you with that. Thank you, I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague Maria, who will talk about filtration. everyone thank you for traveling so far to come and listen to the best thing that's ever happened to wine and spirits which is filtration we like our stuff nice and clear don't we um, if there are craft people in the audience my condolences so um, we're talking about 
It's, it's actually a very long talk, and this is 15 minutes that will save you a lot of money infiltration. It kind of sounds like, sounds like Geico, but it's much better. So I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. Um, if, you, if anybody has a doubt about what filtrability means, is that sometimes wine goes through a filter and it doesn't talk back, it doesn't throw a tantrum, and then other times it doesn't go through and there's lots of frustration and there's lots of uh, finger pointing in some cases. So what we're trying to do here is to show you a way of how to fix filtrability and mostly it's done in line with bottling. So if you're sending bulk wine from whether it be from one facility to the next or you're sending it from one country to the next, um, it's the easiest way to fix filtrability at the point of bottling. If you, for example, you can lose filtrability within little as three hours after adding concentrate. And some concentrates are more colloidally dramatic, like the mega red, mega purple, mega anything. Um, so if there are historically difficult lots that you're dealing with, um, we've seen that with this uh, method, you're going to be able to uh, fix it and you're going to have a much better throughput on your final filters. So the final membrane filters are the filters that are expensive, they don't have a lot of dirt holding capacity, they are um, supposed to last much longer. So we don't want you to have clogged bottling line um, filters, we don't want you to have downtime when you choose we want you to have it when you choose to. So you can, of course, cross-flow the wine, and you can, of course, cross-flow it before you send it. But if you get this wine to the, to the source of bottling and it fails filtrability, you're either going to have to cross-flow it again or you're going to have to run it through another depth filter. So the problem with cross-flow is it's slow, even if you have a fantastically big, beautiful machine, it's still slow and the footprint is quite big. So if you're a bottling facility, the real estate in that bottling hall is quite precious. Um, so we want something that has, you know, is fast and um, doesn't take up so much space. The second uh, one that is still used quite a lot is uh, sheet filters. So sheet filters, not the best choice to fix your filtrability because of the drip losses, the long setup time, um, it's labor intensive, you have to get the sheet oriented right and if you get to the end of setting it up and it wasn't right then you have to start from scratch and I see a few people that I can tell have had to do that before. And so you also have a much bigger large uh, hold up volume so to get that filter pack to the right temperature um, to rinse, and we're talking big, we're talking big filters. We're talking 60 by 60 sheet filters with 120 sheets. You know, we're not talking tiny little cute thing. So, and some of these have stainless steel plates and to take that apart and clean and put it back, um, you might as well leave your CrossFit membership at home and just work there, because it'll totally um, put you through the motions. That one, uh, point of explosion risk is if you're filtering uh, distilled spirits and luckily distilled spirits they don't have the same kind of uh, filtrability issues as we do in wine because they're not filtering to 0.45 micron because they have alcohol on their side so the other the other issue with the sheet filter is that you've got this increased contamination risk because it is an open system and and yeah, it, you know, if there are fruit flies in the general three mile vicinity, they will come to your sheet filter. So a sheet filter, it, you know, this technology has been around for more than a hundred years. We still use it, but for in line with bottling, this sheet filter is not designed to take the stops and starts on the bottling line. So you can totally filter from one tank to the next, but it's still going to be um, slow. Um, so, this is what the site suprapack housing looks like. It looks like R2-D2 gone way overboard. Um, and it's fantastic because it's a split dome format, so the media that fits inside, I'm going to show that to you here in a second, 
is uh, very compact. They fit on top of each other. This can stand in line with bottling. Um, you can connect it to your pre-filter housing, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can go straight to your membrane housing, or you can have it in a different building and filter to a surge tank, and then bottle from that surge tank. Um, so lots of features there, uh, including that you have a pressure release valve. So if you did something crazy and went very high on the pressure, you will not blow it up, which is kind of a big deal. So then the Suprapact technology, basically what these people did, they obviously know their filter media really well, but what they did is they took those sheets um, and they figured a way to, uh, I'll, that's actually the next picture, but they figured out a way to punch more than half a million holes in this media and roll it up so that it becomes a module. And it's, it's like the next step up from regular lenticular filters. So lenticular comes from the word lentil. I know you want to go have Indian food immediately. But so lentils, a convex shape like that, that's stacked on top of each other. Here we have a little bit of a different uh, way that it looks. And the, the uh, wine goes um, edgewise. So it's not just... Uh, uh, perpendicular, it goes perpendicular and then it goes sideways, then it goes perpendicular again. So you, you use a lot more of the surface area than you would a regular sheet filter. So it's a closed system, it, you have reduced handling, the maintenance is much lower because you're not changing out O-rings on sheet filters every uh, year, which is what you're supposed to do if you use it all the time. Uh, you um, can steam and hot water sanitize the system. You can store the media between use. So it's not single use and then you have to throw it out. Uh, the capital for the housing is a lot less than buying a new sheet filter. Um, the, the throughput is ridiculously increased. I will show you some numbers at the end. The, the hold up volume is a lot lower. Um, there is no drip losses, so no torture techniques for those out there. And the, the qu filtrate quality has just improved a lot. So this is how that edge flow works. You'll see uh, um, there's going to be the inlet is the, the red side, and then it's going to you know, follow the path of least resistance, and then you're going to see that it, it moves sideways. And between each of those layers are something that looks like fishing line. It forces the wine to go up and over and move, um, yeah, edgewise. So the, the inlet sides are those clumps of, um, of holes, and then it moves ed edgewise, and then it comes out of that single, that Indian file uh, row of um, holes right there. So you're, you're using the filter media a lot more effectively. So this, Kathy had such fantastic graphs, I figured I should at least have one. But, so the difference here, I, you don't need to look at the orange one, that was the first generation of Suprapack that we don't offer because you can't steam clean it. And um, so if you look at the gray part, the first one is turbidity re uh, reduction. So whether you use a sheet or a Suprapack module, you're going to reduce the turbidity bar none. Um, there are lots of drip losses with your sheet filter, but none with the Supra Pack. Plus, unless you do something silly like not set the housing upright and then you break a seal and then you have drip loss. Um, so, you know, take your time when you set it up because you're going to save a lot more time um, in any case. The product losses through absorption is kind of the same. Uh, a little bit less with the Supra pack because you're using the media a lot more efficiently and of course you can push out with gas if you wanted to. A lot of the wineries don't have time for that because they're doing huge amounts and for them to push out with gas is like adding more time. So some push out with water, some push out with gas. Uh, it's a personal choice. Um, and then setup time is a lot less. Uh, tear down time can be a little bit more because you, uh, if you uh, feel one of those modules that are wet. They're pretty heavy. It's pretty impressive, like lift from the knees straight back. 
And then you have a lot less product loss. Your holdup volume is a lot less. Uh, the footprint is a lot less. It takes up much, much less space. And then the capex, as we um, said on that. For those of you that know lenticulars, um, these modules are not back flashable. Some of them on the market are back flashable. These ones are not because at this stage we already assume that you're filtering a wine that has a low turbidity. If you had Lee's Longevity Plus in there and you came out of a, a tanker, we might have to look at the uh, turbidity of that wine to figure out which grade because going too tight too soon gives filtration a bad name and it's not filtration's fault. So if you had to put a little 12 inch um, lenticular or a 16 inch diameter in there, you will not be able to keep up with production, especially if it's in line with bottling. Uh, the 12 inch is 1.8 meters squared. Most of the 16 inches on the market is between 3.6. Some of them are 3.9. Site has ones that, that's five meters squared. Um, so if it's a slower or smaller bottling line, you can still get away with the Site Super Disc 2 but I'm talking bigger volumes, higher speed uh, bottling lines. You're increasing your surface area a lot by using the um, Supra pack. Uh, that, as I said, that housing is um, uh, split dome. So you can you know, take out some of the segments to use fewer modules. Um, you can go all the way up to six modules high, which is pretty crazy and it's tall it's very tall so for the big wineries that you know adhere to OSHA you might want to think about a platform um, because not everybody can reach that high to take big modules down um, a four high housing is is um, fine if you're running less than 100 gallons a minute and so here is the typical flow rate. So you're looking for one of those modules, you're looking between 14 and 25 gallons per minute per module. Um, so if you have a six high, that's 48 meters squared of internal surface area, that's a lot. You can be easily running more than 100 gallons a minute. So it can sit in line with bottling. It's not going to do crazy things. It's not, it's, the, the pumps on the bottling line that's going to stop and start if things go weird is not going to mess the media up. It's definitely designed for that. Um, so if you look at a, a Supra Pack 6 High, you are thinking of replacing up to 144 sheets in a 60 by 60 sheet filter. That is a big machine. Um, it's a ridiculous 336 sheets in a 40 by 40 sheet filter. That's like... Uh, nearly 10 of those filters, 40 by 40 with 40 plates, that you're replacing the real estate of. I mean, that's so much real estate, you could have an aerobics class in that bottling hall and be fine. And then you can have those people tear down, it's perfect. Um, so, yeah, if you had a little one high, uh, that's only 8 meters squared of internal surface area. If you go six high, that's 48 meters squared. Um, we have quite a few of these out in the field where they are used for um, wine that's been cross-flowed, in some cases uh, DE-filtered, and then they come you know, to the final blending and things are done to it, then they have the choice. We can either cross-flow again, or we can say, oh no, we're just going to go through the Supra pack straight to bottling and we're done. The throughput that they're getting post-cross-flow when you've lost filtrability, and White wines tend to keep their filtrability for a lot longer. Two to three weeks is acceptable, but red wines, there are the colloidally dramatic things that, um, you know, you add a little bit of sugar and it goes, uh-uh, we're not playing with all those phenolics in there. We are making long colloidal chains and we're going to make filtration tough. So to break those chains up, you have to put it through a filter media that has a charge. So we're seeing for a... Uh, uh, Supra pack uh, six high that you're getting between two and three million gallons throughput before you change out that media. So it's very cost effective. Um, if you have any questions for Kathy and I will be at the booth and uh, yeah, and we're running early. So if there's anybody that has a question uh, for us, We have even people carrying it around, but it's fine. We, 
stage fright is a real thing. So you can come to the booth and we won't be, you know, judging. So thank you very much.